They block. They block. We take a look at the AFC playoff picture as we did yesterday because we're at the midpoint of the season and it feels fitting to address the situation. There's a tight race between the four divisional winners at this moment. Uh, and then you'll notice that all of the AFC North logos are sitting, occupying, parked with their flashers on in the wild card spots. Ravens head coach John Harbaugh was asked about this uh, and the tough division that he finds himself in. I think it's really, really awesome that we have such a great uh, division, and I'd, I'd, I'd really be disappointed if we didn't. You know, it'd be just terrible if everybody was not a good team in our division. So, you know, <laughs> uh, that's my best answer. You know, hey, we respect these teams. This, it's a great division. I mean, there's no doubt. It's the best division. Everybody, hit your buzzer if you sense sarcasm out of Coach Harbaugh for that answer. Uh, it's a tough division. We get it. The Ravens are in first place, though. They take on their division rivals, the Browns, on Sunday. Uh, Peter, in a game that's on Fox, yeah. oddly enough. In Vilma, the Kenny Albert. Yes. Coming at you. I like yep. that crew. Uh, and Shannon Speak, I believe. Yes. I like that crew. As well. uh, these teams met back in week four, and it was not pretty for Cleveland. Baltimore picked up Dorian Thompson Robinson three times on a way to a 25-point rout on the road. So week 10 it is, Deshaun Watson it yeah. is, but this time it's in Baltimore. We saw what happened to the Seahawks when they walked in there last week, flew in, if you will, trying to avoid the season sweep the Cleveland Browns are. What statement can the Browns make on Sunday in a crowded AFC North, Peter? The last two home games for the Baltimore Ravens, they have outscored opponents, both who are going to the playoffs, the Lions and the Seahawks, 75-9. to nine. Mm. That is dominance, and they, I've said it last hour, the Ravens seems to only be getting better and better, and yet very quietly, Jim Schwartz's defense has been outstanding this year for Cleveland. They won 27 nothing last week. The Cardinals had, 20, had 58 yards, 58 yards of offense. Take a look at these numbers right here. I'm going to bring this up here because I think this is significant. You talk about a team that's even – just saying. We talk about the great defenses in the league. By a good margin right now, the Cleveland Browns, since 2000, are giving up the fewest yards per game. Historic defense. Okay. And I think about the great defenses of all time, right? Like, you start thinking about the 2000 Ravens, and they had to bench Tony Banks and go to Trent Dilfer, and it was like, teams can win this way, and it hasn't been done it in many, many years. But it is a possibility. And, you know, Kent Graham's getting sacked here by Tony Saragusa or whoever else there down below. Like, these are legendary defense. What the Browns are doing is legendary right now. And we're not, Ray Lewis, we're not talking about it because the offense has been an eyesore. Mm -hmm. And yet, you look at the record, they're five and three. They're right in this thing. Um, we've seen that. The Bucks a couple years later would do it with, with Brooks and Sapp and those guys. That's been 20 years yeah. where we've seen a defense just be dominant and the offense just do enough. I don't know if we can get them over the hump in 2023 with the way the rules are and where the league is played, but I have to give credit to Jim Schwartz and that unit. And it's, of course, all the players. There's too many to name because they're doing so well. Uh, this Browns defense, it is the quietest storyline in football. They've been absolutely suffocating. And yes, they lost to the Ravens by 25 points. They thought Deshaun Watson was going to start, and then about an hour before the game, he's like, I'm not going. They're like, you're not going. And they put in a rookie at a UCLA, a fifth-round pick, who hadn't taken any reps the week before. So I, I think this is going to be a very close game. If I'm going to, it's not going to be a 37-6 to win. It's not going to be a 45-7. to I would say this thing is going to be much more mm -hmm. in line with the old Ravens-Steelers games played at the bank. I'm thinking this is 16-13. This is 19-16. Mm -hmm. One of those type games, maybe even lower, and I think the Browns defense shows up on Sunday. Yeah, I, I believe right. they show up too, And but both teams have really, really good defenses, but I'm going to talk about Cleveland's offense. Okay. Deshaun Watson got back on track last week. He had a really good game, but I need to see more of them pushing the ball downfield. Mm -hmm. They can run the ball. We've seen they run the ball, average 144 yards a game, but they have some speedsters on offense that they're not even trying to use. They have the eighth fewest pass yards per attempt right now, and they have a bona fide number one in Amari Cooper. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying, oh, the Cowboys made a mistake getting rid of Amari Cooper. Well, Cleveland, if the Cowboys made a mistake and now you have him, use him. The Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper connection has to be big on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they need to attempt to push the ball down the field. We know you can run the ball, but you got to test his defenses. Great defenses, a lot of people are afraid to test them. 
Forget all that. You're trying to take over the division. Mm -hmm. Test this defense. Push the ball downfield. You have defenders. Take some chances. Mm -hmm. If you got Deshaun Watson, you paid him all this money, use him. Use him. He got back on track last week. Build off this and go in there and get a big win on the road. Hey, listen, nothing mm -hmm. sweeter than revenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go in there and get you some. I feel I'm jumping off what you're saying. I, I think Deshaun Watson, it is time. You know, it's... It's been maybe three years, but it, it is time now. Show up in Cleveland last year, very bizarre season. And this year is supposed to be the clean new starting experience. Injury, 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 injury. Here we go. Played well last week. Apparently came out of it healthy. Now you're going at Baltimore, division rival. This is the time. This is because Peter, as much as we love Jim Schwartz and the defense, yeah. can you imagine? the statement to answer the question if Deshaun came out and looked great. I, I, I can't imagine them doing it, but yes, I am insane. Yeah. If he comes out and is like, I'm back, I'm healthy, I'm settled, I'm comfortable, I'm going deep to Cooper, I'm running, I'm moving the chains, I'm doing all the things that I'm being paid to do here in Cleveland, then you're like, what could Cleveland do this year? They, they, they can go all the way. Cleveland. It's just a huge if because we haven't seen it in so long. And I'm talking about the old Deshaun, the reason that he's there. He gave us some excitement last week. It was against a, a very bad Cardinals team. This is at Baltimore with Lamar on the other side doing his job. you got to do your job. It's been a weird warm-up where it's at ups and downs and ups and downs and injuries and off the field and all that. This is purely a football conversation. Go beat the Ravens. That, that is a signature win as a Cleveland Brown for Deshaun Watson. If you beat Baltimore and come out at 6-3 and three with that defense, then we're like... Can they beat the Chiefs? Can they beat everybody in the AFC? It's it's a huge day for, I think it's his biggest start by far as a Brown in the very short time he's been there. If he shows us something, if he gives us the good Deshaun Watson, like the Browns can do it all this year. It's the a big units deal. Uh, in Cleveland have begun to play better, all of them, defensively, uh, definitely. However, the Ravens offense have picked up steam as well since the last time they played against Dorian Thompson Robinson and the Browns. So. Just the way this both teams are humming, um, it'll be an interesting clash. Yeah. Let's ask Jason McCourty. Jason McCourty uh, spent one year in Cleveland, so he knows the guys, some of the personnel there, the organization pretty well. And we know you like the Ravens. You like to watch them. They're electric. What do you think the difference maker could be when the Browns and Ravens face off again this season? You guys have done a great job of breaking down the Cleveland Browns from Deshaun Watson to historic how, how historic this defense has been this year. I look at Baltimore, the other side of it, and their defense, all those categories where Cleveland's won. Baltimore is probably around two or three in all of those categories defensively, but you talk about a difference maker. To me, it's Lamar Jackson. As well as this Cleveland Browns defense has played, Lamar is the X factor. He's the guy that can go in there and just dominate at any given time. That game where you're talking about the Baltimore Ravens won 25 to three. Lamar had two rushing touchdowns and two passing touchdowns. So to me, as good as this Cleveland Browns defense is, they're going to have to stop a Lamar Jackson who has been explosive this year. His weapons are starting to step up. They're showing as the sun is peeking out and is finally warming up on my bald head. Uh, they're showing something that what they can do offensively, and I think that's the part where Cleveland is kind of on the lower end because we don't know what Deshaun Watson's going to be. Yeah, he's coming off a really good game. It's been up and down for them offensively, and I think that's going to be the difference maker. Jason, I'm always worried about your bald head. All right, go stay warm. Get in the sun. We appreciate mm, your insights as always. We'll talk to you and Stacey in just a minute. Gerald, we have seen a, a different Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. really, than what we saw last year. You could call it the Todd Munkin effect or just his arrival, maybe re-arrival, I would say, uh, as a quarterback. What have you seen from him and how, how great his play has been? Um, the thing I've seen with Lamar Jackson is that he's been everything that he said he was. Mm. You know, I, I, I spoke about it yesterday with um, – with, how he's evolving as a quarterback. He's not just one read and run anymore. Yeah. Now what he's doing is he's going through all his reads and he's taking what the defense is giving him. Lamar Jackson is a top five quarterback. He's playing like it. Lamar Jackson has been an MVP in his league and he's playing like he wants another one. Mm -hmm. He's leading this team the right way and the way Lamar Jackson is playing, that hump that everybody wants him to get over, this is the year that they can get over it because he has bona fide weapons. Odell got in the end zone last week, and once Odell catches fire, okay. we all know the type of player he can be. So what Lamar has been doing with just running the ball and, like, not worrying about yeah. fantasy owners okay. and letting them know about it, hey, listen, he said, I'm sorry. Listen, I know y'all mad at me, but I'm trying to win games. Lamar is taking what the defense is giving him, and the great thing about Lamar is he always steps up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. Big games, mm -hmm. that's where Lamar is at his best, and this is a big game. So I'm excited to see what I he does. I said it yesterday on the show. I said, you know, he's playing even 
in the best football of his career right now because he's playing a different version of the court. And I got a lot of, a lot of obviously, he won the MVP in 2019. You redefined the position. I think this is a different version of that. That was more playmaker, let's make it happen. He did all the passing. I know that. This version feels like, oh, that's sustainable. Like, he can play this for 10 years the way he's playing right now. Mm -hmm. That one, it was, it was a freak show. It was amazing. It was great. And then we had to wait three more years. But now I think he's playing better football now.